Hello, and welcome to class number two of the fall series. Last week we were looking at earth and being grounded, sort of the most obvious of the elements, the densest of the elements. Today we're going to space, not outer space, inner space, but the most subtle of the elements. And um, exploring, creating some space. Oh, sorry, get this out of my way here. Exploring, um, creating some space in the body to allow a feeling of more sort of mental space. And the, the word in Sanskrit for stress, discomfort, um, is dukkha. And literally, if you translate this word, it means restricted space. So when we're stressed out, we feel that sense of restriction, that sense of being squeezed, kind of backed in a corner. And when we feel good, the opposite in Sanskrit is sukha, meaning ease or happiness, um, often translated that way, but literally expanded space. So when we feel good, when we feel at ease, when we're happy, when we're comfortable, we feel the sense of openness inside. There, there's Not everything is all compressed and intense in our bodies and in our minds. And as we become more mindful, we have more space in our minds. We're not being bombarded quite as much with thoughts of the past and the future that create stress because there's nothing we can do about those things in this moment. So becoming more mindful gives us a little bit more space, a little bit more room to move within, to feel less of that constriction and more expansion. Today we're going to work on focusing on opening the area around the chest for the most part. We'll be working a lot with the breath, a little bit more focused this week on the inhalation, which expands the body and um, working with the breath to create some space. As we do a few back bends to open up the heart area, um, you know, this also works against our natural inclination to round and hunch forward, especially with computers and devices and cars and all of those things that put us in that um, hunched over position. So trying to open up this area around the heart. And just, uh, to say a few words about that in expanding the area around the heart, it's not uncommon for some emotion to rise to the surface. That could be laughter, it could be tears or anything in between, or it could be nothing. Um, so be aware if you feel a little rising up within some emotion, know that that's normal. If it feels overwhelming, feel free to stop the practice, um, come back to it later if you feel comfortable, um, do what you need to do. So we'll um, let's start lying down on the mat, so I'll see you there. When you come to lie down on your mat, you can have your knees bent and bring your hands onto your belly. You're welcome to close your eyes or keep them open as you prefer. And take a few nice, slow breaths just to settle here for a moment. You feel your body connected to the earth, settling, sinking a little here. And then start to tune into and pay attention to your breath a little more subtly. So maybe you can feel any movement in the area of the abdomen as you breathe. This isn't a test. There's no right or wrong way. You may not feel any movement in the belly. That's just something you can also pay attention to and notice. And feeling what's present as you focus your attention on your belly. Let your breath move there as it will naturally without forcing, trying to make anything present. Certainly you may feel breath in other areas of the body and the chest as well, or up in the shoulders. So that's also fine. We're not trying to only feel breath in the belly, but to focus the attention there for now. And 
then keeping that same sense of moving inward, noticing, paying attention, no judgment, just feeling what's present. Excuse me. Can take the hands and bring them up to the collarbones, shoulder area. And again, notice, is there any movement available, noticeable in this area of your body as you breathe? And then letting that go. <clears throat> you can let the arms rest on the ground or on the body that's comfortable. We'll work with a little bit of movement to help expand the physical space of the body. I'm taking the arms down to the sides now. As you start to breathe in, if you're coordinating, raising the arms overhead, it's fine. Back side, exhaling. So you can coordinate this with your breath, inhaling up, exhaling down, or you can simply do the movement. Let breath be free. That's always an option. Urge to move slowly, but your breath is a little bit shorter than the movement. Don't worry about breathing in a particular way. And then we'll work on bringing one knee in at a time. So you'll lift the arms. And breathe in if you're coordinating the breath. As you exhale, bring one knee in toward the chest. Feel how the spine lengthens along the ground. And then one as the arms come up and the other knee comes down or comes in, I should say, as you exhale. So reaching up, foot comes down, drawing in, knee comes to chest. Again, if you're coordinating breath, inhale up. Exhale as you draw in. Knee in toward the chest. You can hold there for a few breaths. Try to relax your shoulders, jaw, neck. And then to create a little more space in the front of the opposite hip, we can Reach the leg <clears throat> down, pressing down into the heel. So a little bit of space coming into the front of the hip here as we compress the other side. Maybe a little feeling of length in the back. We might invite a little space here by adding some movement of that bent knee. So you could circle if you like. Move side to side. You can keep both hands on your knee if you like. Or move one hand away to create a bigger circle or even a bigger circle, letting the hand slide away from the knee as you circle. All right, and then bringing the knee back in toward the chest for a couple of breaths, keeping the opposite leg active, heel pressing down, lots of length. And let's bring the Knee from the chest to the floor, take a breath in, reaching the arms overhead, and then bringing the other knee into the chest. 
And again, staying there for a few breaths. And if you like, you can extend the opposite leg straight out on the ground, keeping the leg active, heel pressing down. And again, some movement with the bent knee, <clears throat> either side to side or circling around. Whatever. Feels good, big circles, little circles. They could be other shapes, figure eights maybe, whatever would feel good and get into the space of that hip. Right, and then when you're ready, bring that foot back to the floor, take a breath in, reaching the arms overhead. And then as you exhale, bend the straightened leg and bring the arms down, coming back to that neutral position. <coughs> Taking the breath in, raise the arms overhead again. Now as you exhale, use your abdominal muscles, press down with the spine and lift both knees to the chest, bringing one hand to each knee. And again, if you're coordinating the breath, inhale as you move the knees away from you. Exhale as you move the knees in. Creating space for the breath to come in as you move the knees away, compressing and squeezing the breath out. Right. And then gradually release your feet to the floor. Stretch your arms out to your side. So it could be shoulder height if you feel a nice little bit of stretch in the arms, shoulders here. Could be a little higher than shoulder height. The elbows could be bent or straight. Finding a position where it feels like a, a gentle and nice stretch across the shoulders and arms, nothing too intense. And you want to make sure that the backs of your hands and your elbows are on the ground. So if you raise the arms too high, the elbows will tend to lift. So lowering down so the arms can be nice and relaxed here. Take a few breaths, breathing into the space of the armpits, the upper chest, the shoulders. If you want a little more movement for the neck, you can roll the head gently side to side. And feeling how that affects the stretch on the shoulders and arms if it does for you. And then as you come back to center, we'll add a little bit of twist also with the lower body. So as the knees go one way, the stretch across the opposite shoulder and um, arm may feel a little more intense. And if it's too much for you, lower the arms as you do the twist. If it feels like a good stretch, then you can keep the arms wherever they are currently. So you can take the knees to one side, maybe shift the head to the other side if that feels good. Back to center, and then to the other side. And again, coordinating the breath here may be helpful for you. Exhale as you go to the side, inhale as you come to center. Or always breathe and move freely if that's better for you. All right now, as we come back to the center this time, we're going to um, shift and come onto our side. So here you're going to want to have a blanket or a pillow to use underneath your head to support your head and fill up the space that your neck has. So what you'll do is you'll shift your hips to one side. And I'm going to shift my hips to the right and move to the left onto my side. If you want to do the opposite side first, that's fine. But I'm going to give instructions for lying on the left side. So we're going to shift the hips. You can lift them up, move them to the right. And that's just going to keep you centered on your mat as you roll to your side. And then bring your folded blanket or your pillow under your head and take both your arms and extend them straight out from your shoulders to the side. So shift as you need to to get comfortable. Take your time to adjust your pillow so that it keeps your neck more or less in line with your spine. 
And then your right hand will be on top of your left hand if you've rolled to your left side. You're going to take your right hand or the hand that's on top and extend it beyond the fingertips of the bottom hand. So you're creating a little bit more openness across the shoulder blades in the back of your body. And then see if you can feel the breath moving into the back sides, into the shoulder blades, back ribs. And then we're going to create a little more opening around the right shoulder by rotating the arm in a circle around the body on the ground. So if you take your fingertips to the ground and start to trace a circle overhead, as you come overhead, you may want to bend the elbow. That's going to make that a little bit easier on the shoulder. As the arm comes to the right, you're going to let the body move to the right. If you feel tightness in the back or hip, you can let the leg lift so you're not coming into a full, full twist. Keep the arm sliding down towards the hip and then back to where you started. So again, tracing a circle on the floor, opening to the right, bringing the arm back down and around. And you can do a few more circles like that as feels comfortable for you. You can probably see I have a little friend doing some yoga with me today. And then eventually as you come back to that more open position with the arms opposite each other, you can roll right onto your back. You might want to shift your hips back to the center or come back to the center. And then before we do the other side, give the knees a little squeeze, lengthening out the back. You can move forward and back a little if that feels good for you. Good. And then bring your feet to the floor. And then for the other side, same thing. You're going to shift your hips to the left and roll to the right. I'm going to shift on my mat, so I'm still facing the screen. Uh, but you can just roll over right from where you are. So hips to the left, knees coming down to the right. Checking in that your head is nicely supported and then taking the arms straight out to your sides. Once again, take the top hand. In this case, it will be your left hand if you've rolled to your right side. Extend your left hand beyond your right hand on the ground and breathe into the space of the back ribs, the shoulder blades. Creating some opening there. And then you can start to make that circle. So taking the hand overhead, opening to the left, all the way around, back to where you started. And continue that movement, going at your own pace. And again, <clears throat> at some point as you come to the open position, arms opposite each other, you can roll onto your back. Shift your hips back towards the center of your mat. If you're using a mat, a mat is optional. And then knees to chest, hands to the knees. And again, a little forward and back movement here. If you're coordinating breathing, inhale, opening knees away from you, or moving the knees away from you, exhale, drawing in. And then again, releasing the feet to the floor. Taking the arms a little bit away from the body. Turn the palms up if that's comfortable for you. And bring your ankles and your knees together. So we'll work with creating a little space in the lower abdomen and the hips with this next one. Also gives a little arch to the lower back, a little movement for the spine. So taking the knees apart, 
Supta Baddha Konasana is the name of this pose. And then bringing the knees back together. So we'll move dynamically, squeezing the knees together and then opening the knees apart. Squeezing the knees together and opening. If you're coordinating breath, inhale as you open, exhale as you close. Move with your own breath, or as always, if your breath doesn't feel like the right pace to move with, then move at your own comfortable pace and breathe freely. If you'd like to stay for a few breaths in that open position, feel free. If you have blocks or pillows or blankets or even your, your fists might be helpful, you can rest something under your thighs or knees to support if you need it. For some people, that feels necessary. And for others, it's completely fine. And it has no bearing on whether your hips are tight or open. It's really a matter of what feels comfortable for you here. One more breath. See if you can breathe right down into the lower belly. And then exhale completely slowly, bring the knees back together. And walk the feet a little bit apart. Maybe if you're using a mat towards the edges of your mat, let your knees fall together. So now we're inviting a little more internal rotation of the thighs as opposed to external rotation. You can let the hands rest anywhere on the body and take a few breaths here. Now for the next movement, we're going to work with the bridge pose. For this, you probably don't want this thick pillow or blanket underneath your head. You could remove it all together or you know, make it a little smaller if that's a, an option with what you're using there. <clears throat> so as we come into bridge, the neck goes into flexion. With a, a thick pillow under there, it's gonna put more flexion on the neck and that could be um, too much for your for your neck, so see how it feels for you. Then you're gonna line your heels more or less up under your knees. So you don't want to be too close or too far away, but if you find lining your heels up under your knees creates any kind of tension in the knees, you might try a little further away to see if that helps at all. Hands down at your sides. Think about kind of wiggling your shoulder blades down a little bit and creating some space in the neck. We'll lift the arms as we lift the hips. So let's start with a breath in. As you exhale, press down into your feet. Feel that length come into your lower back. And then inhale, lifting the hips, lifting the arms overhead. Exhaling and lower down. See if you can keep your feet grounded, your toes on the ground, the inner and outer arches, and sorry, balls of your feet, the inner and outer heels grounded. Great, and then next time you come down, stay down for a moment and we're going to come into the pose and optionally stay in the pose. If you prefer to keep moving, if that feels good to you, you can just go ahead and keep moving dynamically in the posture. And we're going to hold the pose for a bit and really work on opening the chest and the shoulders. So this can be a lot of work for the legs. So if you feel like you want support, you can slide a block underneath your hips to keep your hips elevated without the effort for the legs. And if you want to work on a little bit more leg strength, then leave the block. So we'll start by again, taking a breath in, exhaling, pressing into the feet to lengthen the lower back, and then inhaling, lifting up. And here, again, reaching the hands down towards the feet. And depending on how long your arms are and how great your reach is here, you might reach your feet, hold your heels or even your ankles if that's available. You might wiggle your shoulder blades in a little to create a little more opening across the collarbone. And that might allow you to bring the hands together, pressing down for a little more lift. 
it may feel better to you to keep the arms apart and just turn the palms up to create a little more external rotation at the shoulders. So you feel what is best for you, what creates ease and openness across the chest. The legs may be working hard here, or you might be supported with a block. But our main focus is that nice big opening in the rib cage, shoulders, chest. When you're ready to release, if you've clasped the hands, you'll take them apart, wiggle your shoulders apart, and slowly bring your spine to the ground. Knees can then come into the chest. And the movement here, stretching the legs over head, the arms to the, towards the floor behind you. And then knees back to your chest, hands to your knees. So you're inhaling and reaching and extending. Exhaling, knees coming in. Right. You can hug the knees into the chest and stay there for a few breaths, maybe doing a little side-to-side -side movement if you find that a nice massage on your spine. Good. One or two more breaths here. Feeling that constriction now with the breaths. We talked about constriction being you know, generally less comfortable than expansion, but we really need both, just like the dark and the light, to appreciate the opposite. So feel that compression. If it feels comfortable for your neck, you could lift up and come into a tight little ball here. And then when you're ready, you can release, extend your arms overhead, extend your legs out, and grow long from your fingertips to your heels. Invite that space in with your breath. And then gradually lower your arms, bend your knees. You can roll onto your side and make your way to an upright position. And then we'll come right around to all fours. If you have blocks and you find it helpful to use them for either stepping forward from downward dog or all fours or we'll be working with warrior and a forward bend today so you might find the blocks handy but if you don't have them everything is totally doable without them so hands more or less under the shoulders to begin with lifting the tail taking a breath in here exhaling and rounding the back For those of you who are looking for a little bit more movement at this point and you want to stretch a bit more and it's comfortable for your wrists, you can alternate downward dog. So inhale, arching, exhale, rounding, then inhale, arching, exhale, downward dog. Knees bent as much as you need to to feel length in the spine. And if you want a little more stretch on your exhale when you're on all fours, instead of just rounding, you can move to child's pose. Repeating some form of this pattern as feels right for you. If you like, you can stay in either child's pose or downward dog for a, breath, a few breaths. If you've opted for downward dog, you might create a little more space in the back of the legs by walking the heels one by one toward the ground. Try to relax your neck so it's not tense in the back of the neck, holding the head up, let the head hang. And then eventually, let's come back down to all fours. If you are comfortable sitting on your heels, you can sit back or you can sit on the ground or a block or whatever is comfortable. And we'll do a few circles for the wrists, creating a little bit of 
space and ease in the wrists. You can make fists as you circle or keep the hands open, whatever feels like the best kind of stretch and movement for you. <coughs> and then give them a shake. Right, and then we'll come back to all fours and we're going to move into warrior pose. So lots of options to get there from all fours. So you could bring your blocks under your hands if you like. And you can either do this from all fours or downward dog. So from all fours, you might just step that foot forward, raising the opposite hand to get the knee um, past the, the chest area. So that's one way. And then you just tuck the toes under and lift up from there. If you want to work from downward dog, you'll come up. And the best time to step forward is after you've finished an exhale. You can hold the breath for a second. So that creates a little more space for that knee to come up. It's not uncommon to get stuck part way. And if that's the case, you might just lower the knee and go back to option one. Otherwise, from downward dog, exhale, step forward. Take your back foot, turn it out to the side, and you could step it forward a little bit. But a shorter stance in warrior creates more ease. Blocks can stay in whatever position you can comfortably reach or otherwise reaching to the ground or to the leg as we move in this position. So from this downward position, we're gonna bend the knee as we come up, bringing the knee over the ankle, raising the arms overhead, and then as you exhale, you can come forward, hands to the, to the leg. Make sure you're not locking the knee back here. Or you could reach to the ground or to your blocks, whatever is available to you. So coming up, we're bending the knee. Inhaling if you're coordinating breath. Exhaling, you can move the leg straighter as you come forward. So in this way, we're creating some opening as we come up in the front part of the back hip a little bit. And of course the chest and shoulders as we come forward, we're creating more space in the back of the front leg. Maybe one or two more here. Right. And as you come forward this time, let's switch sides and you have options. The simple switch is to step forward and then back with the other foot to come to warrior on the other side. And the more challenging shift is to step back to downward dog. And then from there, repeat the forward step after an exhale. Bring the right foot forward now. And taking the left foot and turning it out. Inhaling, bend the knee as you lift. Press into the back foot. Keep the back leg nice and firm. Moving the front leg a little straighter as you come forward if you like. And again, this time, if you like, if it's comfortable for you, stay forward for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, we'll step both feet together toward the front of your mat. Bend your knees a little bit. Inhale and lift all the way up. Exhaling to release your arms to your sides. So coming to stand, let's feel the earth beneath us as we were working a lot with last week in Tadasana Mountain Pose. So feel your toes, the balls of your feet, the heels, 
and let slightly more weight come into your heels to feel your body kind of a little stronger, a little more stable. So you feel your thighs pull up, maybe slight engagement through the belly, but not squeezing or clenching. And then a feeling from the sit bones down to the heels of dropping down and maybe even right from the sit bones through the heels into the earth. So there's a sense of really being heard. So when we feel more grounded, it gives us more stability to expand from that space. Well, let's bring the palms together. Do a little press into the palms, shoulders down, feel some stretch maybe up into the forearms and wrists. We'll create a little space with some breath and movement, taking the arms up as you breathe in. And then exhale to make it a big circle around you. And then hands come back together, inhaling and lifting. Exhaling and circling. Great, we're gonna add on this time, so lifting up. Exhale, circling, bring your arms behind your back. Interlace your fingers and lift the heart as you breathe here. Feel that your breath kind of opens up this upper chest area. And then next, exhale, bring the hands together and to the front, back to where we started. And we'll do that again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, circle. Hands back and reaching down, lift the chest. Take a couple breaths here. Keep softness in the jaw. And then exhaling, hands back to the heart, and we'll add on again this time. Breathing in. Make that circle as wide as you can. Bring your arms behind your back, interlace and lift. Good. This time as you exhale, slide the hands down the thighs. You can stop at the knees or the shins or the ankles or the floor. Take a breath here. And then inhale and come all the way up. And bring the palms together. Exhale back to the heart. We'll do that one one more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, big circle. Take the arms back. Breathe in and lift the heart. And then exhale, slide forward. Bend your knees a little. You can stop. Elbows on thighs if you like. We'll take a few breaths here. Any position that feels comfortable. And you'll come all the way up with a breath in. Bringing the palms together through the heart and releasing to your sides. So turn back towards the, um, maybe you haven't turned the way I have, but you want to be um, towards the front of your mat, maybe about a third of the way back or so. We'll take a breath in and lift. As you exhale, bend your knees a little bit, come forward. Take your hands down. And you can step back to downward dog or straight back to all fours. But ultimately, we're coming down to all fours. And be, it depends how tall you are, really, but I need to be back near the back of my mat with my feet so that when I lie down, my face is still on my mat, not on the floor, but you know, adjust as you need to. So from all fours, we're going to take the hands ahead of the shoulders, a few inches, maybe you know, roughly a hand print forward. And you can test if that's the right position by coming forward into a half plank and seeing if your shoulders line up over your wrists. And if not, you can adjust a little forward or a little back to find just the right position. Try not to lock your elbows here, so keep a little softness. And try not to dump into your shoulders so you're not coming into this sort of position, but pressing into the hands. And then we're going to come to the ground by bending the elbows and letting the body 
Roll down, so thighs, belly, chest, and forehead. And I'm mindful of my microphone here, but you can bring your forehead right to the ground. And bring the hands down to the, or elbows into the side, so the hands and the forearms are on the ground. We're gonna work with grounding through the lower part of your body. So from the hips down, gently squeezing the buttocks, the thighs, pressing into the tops of the feet. If your feet tend to cramp, tuck them under or bring a blanket under your ankles. So this firm lower body, really anchored into the earth. We talked a lot about anchoring and earth last week. From here, let the upper body be light. So there's no pressure on the hands. Inhale, lift. Any amount. Exhale and lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale and lower. One or two more. Again, if you find coordinating, coordinating with the breath is not working for you for any reason, just breathe normally and do the movement at a comfortable pace. If you like, you can stay a few breaths or keep moving if that's a better option for you today. Try to think about lengthening the back of your neck so shoulder blades can move down. You might imagine you're pulling with your arms against the ground to create a little more opening in the chest. Coming down as you're ready. You could rest your head on your hands if you like, or turn your head to one side, whatever is comfortable. Bend your knees, a little side to side movement with your lower legs. And then come back to the center. Bring the hands back a little bit so the elbows are off the ground. Lift up to all fours. You can walk the hands back. And do a little side to side movement here. One way and the other way. Maybe a little bit of circling with the hips. And maybe a little stretch back towards child's pose. And we'll come back to all fours. Again, walk the hands a little forward so that you are in a good position. When you come to the kneeling plank, your shoulders line up over your wrists and then bend your elbows, keep the shoulders down and back, roll your body to the ground. And take the hands back alongside your legs. Again, forehead to the ground. I'm not quite there because I'm mindful of the microphone. Again, gently engaging the hips, the thighs, the legs. And then as you lift up, we'll lift up the legs, the chest, shoulders move back and down, lift the arms, and then exhale, lower down. So again, dynamically lifting, exhale, lowering. Continue a couple more times. And then again, you have the option to hold the pose. It doesn't matter how high you lift, think more about length and integrity, space growing across the shoulders in front, squeezing the back of the body. Whenever you're ready, you can lower down. Let the hands come to the ground by the shoulders and lift up to all fours. And again, here, any movement that would feel good. So maybe it's back to cat-cow. Maybe it's adding child's pose to that movement. Or as we did right at the beginning, could come into downward dog. So moving in whatever way feels good. It could be circles with the hips again. And after a little bit of movement, feel free to stay. You could stay in child's pose or maybe a few breaths in downward dog and then come to child's pose. 
And when you eventually get to child's pose, focus again on your breath here. So in child's pose, the knees can be together or they can be apart. And apart is a good idea if you feel compression in the abdomen um, and it feels uncomfortable when you have the knees together, it kind of presses into the belly. Take the knees apart. If it's comfortable to have the knees together, that's fine. Either way, there's a little bit more compression in the front of the body and awareness perhaps of breath moving into the back of your body here. So whatever position you're in, see if you can feel a little bit of movement in the back of your body now. So we just did a lot of work to strengthen the back, contract those big muscles. Now we wanna give them a little more space, breathe into the lower back as much as possible. And feel that sense of expansion in whatever way that makes sense to your body. You can take a few more breaths here. And then when you're ready, you can roll upright and then you can find your way back onto your back on your mat. So again, as you come down onto your mat, you can have your knees bent, feet on the floor where we started today. Let your body settle, feel the earth beneath you, feel your lower back relax, your neck, your face and jaw soften. And then you can take the arms and extend them up toward the ceiling. Palms face each other over your chest. Reach up with the fingertips so you feel your shoulder blades move apart and then let the shoulder blades sink down. Bend your elbows to take your hands to opposite elbows. So you've got a little shape of a square over your chest. And then we'll move from this position with a, another gentle twist. So side that feels comfortable. Knees go one way, head and arms can go the other way. Coming back to center and then to each side. Again, it doesn't matter how far you move into the twist. The more important thing is that it feels comfortable to you. And again, we're getting a little bit into the back of the body and the sides of the body, creating some space here. Right. And then eventually making your way back to the center, releasing your arms, bring your knees up in towards your chest again, squeezing in and then moving away. Exhale, drawing in, squeezing the breath out and then inhaling into that space as you move the knees away. You can hug the knees and any movement that would feel good to you here. And continue with whatever would feel good for a moment. And whenever you feel ready, we're going to move to Shavasana, a little relaxation to end the class today. So you can make your way to a comfortable lying down position usually on the back, but it could be any position that works for you. Knees can be bent or straight. Arms can rest on the body or on the ground. You could also come to sitting if you prefer, if you want to do more of a seated meditation to end the class, and that might be a nice option if you've you know, got somewhere to go and you need to be more alert after the class. If you're you know, more heading to the couch or to 
to bed, depending on the time of day you're doing this class, you may want to do this part lying down. Take a few more breaths here, conscious breath. Of course, you're going to keep breathing. Let the awareness be on the breath and not directing the breath in any particular place, but noticing where you feel it. Where do you feel movement with your breath? And can you soften completely as you exhale and let the body sink down? Find that connection to the earth and settle into that connection. Soften your face and jaw, let the weight of your head sink down. Allow the neck to release a little more and the shoulders to soften and drop. As you exhale, feel the back of your rib cage release, feel the arms relaxed and heavy right to the fingertips. Your hands are soft. Really soften the belly now. As you exhale, feel your belly button naturally drop back towards your spine. There's no effort, just so let that happen. And then as you exhale further, feel your sacrum drop the back of the hips. Exhale, focus on the exhale, each breath allowing you to soften and sink down a little more. The inhale happens naturally. You might imagine a little space with your inhale, a little softening with your exhale, thighs and knees letting go. Calves, ankles and feet releasing. And then if this image makes sense to you, if it works for you, if it feels positive for you, you might imagine that as you breathe in, you're breathing in through the pores of your body. So as you inhale, the whole body gently expands or seems to expand. As you exhale, the whole body softens and sinks down a little bit more. See if you can... Move into that idea, that image, of breathing in through the pores, breathing out through the pores of your body. And if that doesn't make sense to you or that image doesn't work at all, then simply breathe and just feel wherever you feel expansion on the inhale, wherever you can soften and let go a little more on the exhale. And as you continue to focus on your breath, I'll create more space, more space in ourselves. So space is lack of stress or more ease. And when we feel more ease, when we feel more relaxed, when we feel more open, we have a greater capacity to connect more deeply to our true selves. When we're stressed and trying to please others all of the time, we have a very difficult time connecting to our selves. So this chant is about connecting to the very, very deepest part of ourselves. Some would call it our soul or spirit. And this chant, it, it's named Purusha. It's, a, it's quite a long chant, and I'll just do a little part of it for you today. So keep your breath. Expanding and softening. Om 
Sahasrashir Shapurushaha Sahasrakshak Sahasrapat Sabhum Yim Vishvato Vritva Atya Tishthada Sangulam Purusha Evedagum Sarvam Yadputayachabhavyam Utamritat Vasye Shanaha Yadane Natirohati Etavanasya Mahima Ato Jaya Gusha Purushaha Stay with your breath for another minute or so. Gradually start to deepen your breath a little bit now. If you want to stay a bit longer in Shavasana, you can just ignore the instructions from here on and just stay. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, you can just shut the uh, video down and continue on your own. And if you're ready to move on, add a little movement Wiggle your fingers and toes, move and stretch your body in any way that would feel good. Eventually rolling onto your side and making your way back to sit as you're ready. Just take your time. There's no rush. And if you've come to sit and you Want to bring your hands together, you can bring the hands together. And take this sense of space with you in whatever way you've managed to connect with the theme today. See if you can take it into your life. Notice when you start to feel tense and compressed and maybe if that relates to your mood in some way. And you could then create a little space with your breath or with some movement to, again, see if that affects your mood in any way. Namaste.